December. What's up, everyone? Are you guys doing all right? No? I have a no. How are you guys doing over there? Sophomore boys? Couple claps? Couple thumbs up? Junior boys, how are you? Hey, someone text Josh. Tell him to get get back. Okay, I guess I'll text him later. All right, hey, welcome to high school ministry at Cross City. Merry holidays. Happy New Year in about 26 days. And uh, I have some announcements for you. I know you guys are just really, really, really excited to hear all the announcements. The first one is, hey, if you are new, fill out a connection card. We have a gift for you. Thank you for being here. You can ask one of the adults at your table and say, hey, I'm new. I need a connection card. And they'll, uh, they'll get one for you. All right. On Wednesday, hey, check this out. This is actually important. So I actually need you to listen for once in your lives. So Wednesday night is December 7th. What are we doing? Field trip. Shopping. So if you guys are a part of small groups on Wednesday nights, you should be aware that we have adopted a child who needs some Christmas gifts. So you need to bring your money. You need to bring your money, 10, 15, 20 bucks per person should probably be enough. Uh, if you can't get up to 10 and it's just five or whatever, it should add up. So just to confirm, we are still meeting Wednesday night. We're gonna have worship and a message, but instead of small groups, that's when we're going shopping. So we're still meeting here in the student center. I think I'm teaching, I don't know. You can show up late if you want, who cares? But we do need to go shopping during small group time. Everyone understand, small group leaders, I have your little lists. I can give those to you. Just attach it or put it in your, um, I'll explain it later on Wednesday. Sure, put it, put it in your gifts. All right, last announcement, Hume Lake Winter Camp. Who's already signed up? Are you signed up? Yeah. Are you excited about it? Yeah. Tell us more. Some snowmans. Would that be snowmen or women? Snowmen. Okay. I'm not even going to ask a follow-up question. I don't want to see any pictures. That's I, I like my job. All right. Hey, if you have not signed up yet, this is also important. The price goes up $50 on Thursday. So you have today, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So you have three and a half days to sign up if you want the early bird rate. If you want to pay an extra $50, then be my guest. Wait and sign up later. But if you need financial aid, if you need some help financially, if you need some help financially, talk to your small group leader or talk to me, Scott, Keaton, Seth, Anna, basically anyone who's not a kid. I'm going to pray. And before I pray, I'm going to ask you guys to stand up. I'm going to ask you to stand up so I can pray, and then we can enter into a time of worship. Father God, we love you so much. So excited for this holiday season, and uh, thank you for a great start to December. Lord, we just pray that um, you would just continue to be the focus of Christmas and December, and just looking forward to what you're going to do in 2023. But as we look back, God, we're just excited for what you've done in 2022. And uh, we just give you this time, and we love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, guys. Let's go into a time of worship right now. When darkness drives to roll over my bones, Sorrow comes to steal the joy I own. When brokenness and pain is all I know, oh, I won't be shaken. Oh, I won't be shaken. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand. Stand in your love, my fear 
Christ be 
about Jesus' birth right now.
Let's go ahead and pray together, you guys. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your presence in our lives and that we just get to worship your holy name and that you were born and you came to earth as a baby, Lord. I just thank you for, um, for just dying on the cross for our lives, Lord, and just laying down um, your life so we could have eternal life with you, Lord. We just thank you so much for this morning and we give you our lives. In your name we pray. Good? Yeah? All right, you guys, who's ready for Christmas? Okay, I have a question for you. Who, whose parents are home decorated for Christmas before Thanksgiving this year? Anybody? A couple of you. <laughs> Miss Robin did. I know. I saw it all over Instagram and like everywhere else that all these houses were decorated before Thanksgiving. Honestly, I would have too. If Kevin would have let me, I would have too. He just, that's... That's not his thing. So anyway, we have not done that. You know, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like, I mean, I love Christmas. It's my favorite time of year, but I'm like a stubborn person. So I just feel like sometimes everything about Christmas, it's like they're trying to get an emotion out of me and almost tell me how I have to feel about the holiday season, about Christmas. Does anybody else ever feel like that? Like every Hallmark movie, they kind of manipulate you, right? It's like, the same thing. They're always manipulating our emotions. It always has to, it always ends well, right? Every Hallmark movie it starts like with a little bit of a tragedy and then it ends all, it always ends perfectly for whoever the character is. And I just feel like it's a little manipulative. So the stubborn me, fun fact, I've never, ever watched a Hallmark Christmas movie ever. I know that's crazy. Well, it's kind of crazy, but Another fun fact about me, my dad tapes all of them, and my dad watches them religiously for the whole month of Christmas, like December. So I have like this really weird dad. My mom watches football, and my dad watches Christmas Hallmark movies, and we like totally make fun of them. So anyway, so I don't know. I've grown up around it because my dad's always watched Hallmark movies, and I'm like, peace out. I'm out. I just don't know. I love this time of year, so I need a little audience participation. What do you, what's just one word do you think about when you think about Christmas? You guys can shout it out. Jesus. Okay, okay, that's a great church answer. Jesus, what else? Huh? Snow, presents, tree, Santa, reindeer, okay, guys. Love, joy, peace, like any of those things? No. Family time? Yeah. Really, truly, it's supposed to be that time of year where everything appears somewhat perfect, right? All the Christmas songs feel perfect, all the... So what do you do with that when it's just not so perfect? Here's a couple pictures of my little Christmas traditions. Here's a picture of my daughter Hannah putting the topper on the tree. That's every year they alternate. Hannah does one year, and then the next year, Zeke does it. So there's Zeke on there. He'll kill me that I'm showing you guys. My both my kids. But the reality is one time when they were doing it, the tree didn't stand top. I don't have a picture of it because I was in such shock and we were all running to pick up the tree as it was tumbling over. So I do not have a picture. But in reality, this happens. Those are the perfect pictures we put on Instagram, right, of Christmas. But next slide is the reality of what can happen at Christmas, right? I mean... While we think it all is perfect, the reality is it's not always perfect. And we definitely don't put that one on Instagram or Snapchat, right? We put the really pretty ones. We don't put the ones where everybody's on the ground and everything's broken and it's falling over. Okay, the next slide I'm going to show you, those are my cousins. That is Carrie and Curtis, my cousins. I mean, wait, just the funniest part about the whole picture, look at Santa's eyes. He is looking at my aunt saying, come get your demon child off my lap. That's my cousin Carrie, and look at her brother like, hey, start acting right, or we're not getting any presents from Santa. I mean, this is, so every, this is fun tradition in my family, every, um, the day after Thanksgiving on Black Friday, this picture gets um, sent to our family group chat, and every year tradition, this, we just a reminder of welcome to Christmas season, because in reality, 
our family at least, looks a little more like this than the perfect little picture. And so it's a funny reminder. My cousin sends it out every year to all of us just to remind us and say, happy Christmas season as we start. This is the reality of our lives. So I'm showing you our family tradition. Don't tell my cousins I even showed you that picture. She's going to kill me. But Christmas is supposed to be that classic, joyful, wonderful time of year. But sometimes it's just really not, right? Every year we have such hope at Christmas. We start cooking all our favorite foods. We start making cookies. We are decorating. We're singing carols. We're watching the Hallmark movies. And we're thinking, what could be better? But the truth is, sometimes that really high bar of expectation is not the actual reality of what you or I are living through during that Christmas time. And I know it's to remind us of the best case scenario of life, and that's great. But the truth is, it could be a mess. The truth is, sometimes you're dealing with maybe getting used to having Christmas in two different houses. Maybe you're having to get used to um, step-siblings that you're going to have to share your parents with and share Christmas with. Um, Maybe you're facing the fact that money is super tight. That's a reality of this Christmas. There might not be as many Christmas presents under the tree. There might just be a struggle in your family. Maybe this Christmas you're reminded of the Christmas that you're missing somebody this year. Someone's passed away in your family. And so Christmas doesn't feel very fun this year. The expectations of Christmas is, you know, sad, really. You're missing somebody. Maybe you're seeing all those picture-perfect families everywhere on Instagram, and you're getting the Christmas cards, and your family just isn't really that seen that way. Or maybe you're facing two weeks away from your friends over Christmas break, and not one person calls you. And it could be really lonely. So... I know that sounds kind of doom. I'm giving you all the worst case things here, but you might be wondering, is it even possible to experience joy, hope, love, peace in Christmas when Christmas is so messy? Um, I'm going to walk you through the very first Christmas. We're going to talk about that today. And the song that they sang, Oh Holy Night, if you really want to like really experience what what Jesus came for, go back and listen to those lyrics because it was the perfect opening to what I'm going to do. But this is, you can put the nativity set back up. Maybe, maybe not. No signal, it says. Um, But we see them at Nativity Set, and it was up there a minute ago, and that's how we view Christmas, right? The glowing Mary, all the sheep were perfectly sitting there, like staring up at baby Jesus, and everybody's rejoicing, and it's so pretty. And the reality is, that is not at all what the first Christmas was. The first Christmas really was a hot mess. And we're going to get dive into it. But we portray Mary. I mean, there are actually cultures that portray Mary and actually some faith that portray Mary as a saint. Like she was this perfect being. But the reality is Mary was just like us. She was really just like us. And Luke, well, it's not going to be up there. So I'm just going to read it to you. But Luke chapter one, verse 30 through 31 says this. When they came to Mary, it says, The angel said to her, do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you will call him Jesus. He will be the great, he will be great and he will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne to his father, David. So basically here's Mary, an angel comes to her and says, hey, I have got great news for you, Mary. You have found favor with God. God has seen you and you are gonna birth the Messiah. He's gonna be great. He's going to be the son of the most high, meaning he's going to be the son of God. And she gets this big news. Okay, and while that all seems perfect and exciting, and I'm sure in our minds we're thinking Mary's like, yes, my son's going to be famous. It's going to be great. Here's the reality of it. The reality is Mary's situation is pretty messy. Mary, here's one problem. She was super young. How many in the room are about 15 years old? Anybody in here 15? Raise your hands. Okay, that is, can you imagine an angel coming to you right now and saying, hey, guess what? You're going to have a baby, and I'm going to give you that baby. Right. That's how old history says Mary was about 15 years old when this happened. Talk about terrifying and shocking news. Mary had to be, instead of, yippee, I'm having this great experience, I'm quite sure Mary was terrified. I'm pretty sure she was pretty scared, and she'd never given birth before. Second thing, Mary was in this news while they're spinning it like this is great news, and it is great news for us. Don't, we won't mistake that. Mary was in a lot of danger. In that day, in those society, and in that culture, 
If you got pregnant before you were married, you were stoned to death. That was the law. You would be killed. So now this is not only that Mary is young and scared, Mary is in a dangerous situation. Because while the angel came and told her this news, this great news, that you were going to give birth to this great Messiah, and he was going to be the son of God, and everything was going to be great. The problem is the angel didn't go tell all the religious leaders of that day. They didn't, he didn't go tell her family. So now this great news has turned into a little bit of chaos for Mary. She's young, she's scared, and now she's in danger. Also, Mary was the center of all the town gossip because I'm quite sure when she showed up pregnant, she's engaged and she's pregnant. They haven't got married yet. And she literally could be stoned as part of the culture. Now, all the whispers behind her back, all the looks that she was getting around town, the shame that I'm sure people were talking about her family and the shame. So you have to understand everything Mary is carrying with this message of great news, also on the flip side, is quite a mess for her. It's a mess. And really, her conditions weren't even ideal. You know, we, when we give birth nowadays, we have a hospital, we have nurses, we have doctors, we have all of these great medicines that helps you give birth. Mary had nothing. And technically, it was not only just dangerous, we're going to find out in a little bit, Mary has to give birth because there's no room for them. Mary has to give birth in a cave with a bunch of farm animals and not a lot of support. You got to remember, she's a little bit of an outcast going into this situation. Okay, so Luke 2, I, I don't think it's going to come up on the screen, but Luke 2, verse 6 through 7 says this, while they were there, the time came for the baby to come, be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So those list of stressful circumstances I was just sharing with you that Mary was dealing with, they kind of went on and on. And the point is, that this peaceful manger nativity scene that we always see in pictures, that wasn't the reality. That, didn't, that wasn't what happened. The actual reality was a mess behind the scenes. You had the smells of the farm animals. You had all these animals. I'm quite sure the lambs weren't laying there peacefully just looking at her while she's giving birth and looking at Jesus. I'm sure they stunk. I'm sure they were all over the place. The sounds, the smells. And why does that matter? Here's why it matters. If your Christmas doesn't feel like it's living up to that commercialized Christmas expectations, you're in great company. You're in great company this Christmas because it doesn't have to be. Your Savior came into the world in a messy circumstance and messy scene. It was a messy Christmas. But does that mean that all is lost? It doesn't. Does that mean Christmas is doomed? Nope. The point is that even though Things weren't how they should be. The opposite is the reality. So I set the scene for Mary's kind of behind the scenes chaos and situation, but something else was happening at the same time that she was in the middle of this whole chaos and mess. In Luke 2, 8 through 14, I don't know if they're going to have it up. I do see that they've got the slide up. Luke 2, 8 through 14, it says this, and there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. Okay, sidebar before I keep going the verse. This is the second time that an angel showed up to Mary, showed up to the shepherds, and what is the first thing out of the angel's mouth? Do not be afraid. So I have to surmise that angels are absolutely terrifying. Because we see these pictures of angels with these beautiful wings and a nice flowy robe, and we think, oh, angels are amazing. And again, the same kind of thing that we make this picture of how things should be. And in reality, angels have to be terrifying because if they're going to tell you don't be afraid, they have to be pretty terrifying and powerful. So just a sidebar about that. But here's what they say. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause you great what? Joy. For who? For just a few people? Just for the shepherds? No, it says I will bring you great joy for all the people. That means for you. That means for me, for all of us. This is the great news. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. So is there any doubt of who he is? There is not. The angel tells him. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. We'll find the baby wrapped in clothes and laying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. So while... Mary is experiencing the joy, and let's be honest, probably the complete terror 
of having, giving birth to this baby boy surrounded by wild animals in a stall and smelly things, these shepherds were finding out in a very big way that the long-awaited Messiah was finally here. Now, this says something that the Hebrew people had been waiting for for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. So it's no wonder that God used angels to send their heavenly host and give that message. Because can you imagine what the shepherds did next when they got that news? If you were there and you got that news, that the Messiah that you've been waiting for and heard about for hundreds and hundreds of years is finally here. You know what they did? They ran straight there to go see it. They wanted to see it for themselves. And in Luke 8, 16 through 18, it says this. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about him, this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said. So you can picture Mary in her current circumstances. The angels told her she's going to give birth. She gives birth. She's laying there. It's been chaotic. It's been crazy. It stinks. She's probably relieved it's all over. And now a bunch of strange guys come in that are shepherds and they want to check out this baby. But the good news for her is it confirmed everything that God said to her. Because right when they saw the baby, they acknowledged him as the Messiah. And so everything the angel had told Mary way back when, when she got pregnant, came true. And so while people doubted her, while people were probably shaming her, and while people were spreading all these lies about her, the reality is these shepherds just came and confirmed that exactly what God said would happen, would happen. Here's the thing, just like your Christmas season isn't, may not be living up to all of your expectations and you already are, probably have expectations that it probably won't if you're having a rough year, or maybe it is. The fact is this, God is here. He is present in the details of your life. He knows, he cares, and he is present. That is the present, presence, ha ha, that is the present. So, do you want to know what Mary's response was in all of this? Here's Mary's response. Luke 2.19 says this, But Mary treasured up all the things and pondered them in her heart. I thought that was interesting. That she, and I was thinking, what did she treasure up and ponder? What did she do? Through the ups and downs of her circumstances, Mary knew this. God was with her. Because of that, she was able to find the treasure, which is the joy. She was able to find joy in the midst of the messy chaos joy in her situation. And she held that thought and she carried it on that very first Christmas. Mary didn't let other people tell her how she was supposed to feel about her circumstance. I'm sure she had nine months of people being critical of her, spreading rumors about her, telling her all kinds of stuff about herself. And at the end of the day, She didn't carry any of that. She didn't let other people define. So whether you're looking at Instagram or Snapchat and you're seeing all these great pictures and you let it affect your mood because you're that's letting somebody else define how you feel about your situation. You don't need to do that. God is with you, individual you. And because of that, you can have joy in the midst of your chaos. You can find something to be grateful for. She didn't let other people define her and tell her what, what, how she should feel about it. So after the shepherds left to go spread the news about Jesus, the Messiah, they came back to Jesus, and this is what they did. Luke 2.20 says, The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. God did what he said he was going to do. And this Christmas, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know all your family situations, but I can promise you this because he promised it at the first Christmas. He will do whatever he says he's going to do in your life. He is with you. He is present. That is why you can choose to find joy in this Christmas. We can take our cue from Mary and the shepherds. They found joy. They treasured it up. They celebrated. It's okay to celebrate even if you're sad. It's okay to celebrate even if you're going through a rough time. It's okay. Because here's the point. We can choose to find joy in our situations. We can. We can choose it. We can celebrate even when things don't seem that great. When things are boring, you can celebrate the fact that you're enjoying a restful moment. Moment. When things are less glamorous, you can find beauty and simplicity. When things don't meet your expectations, you could bring hope to somebody else by serving them. Sometimes the greatest thing we can do when we're not feeling it in a Christmas season is go serve somebody else and bring them joy. And in return, God can fill your heart and give you joy. We can find something to be joyful about this Christmas, even in the mess. So why? Because of the very name of God, God gave Jesus the very name. 
Emmanuel, God with us. That is why we celebrate Christmas. That's the very thing. That is the reason for the season. Emmanuel, God with us. This means that even though things might be messy, the one who is hope, Jesus, the one who is peace, Jesus, the one who is joy, Jesus, and the one who is love, Jesus, cares about you and whatever you're going through. So you are not alone when life gets messy. You are not alone. Don't believe the lie that you see everywhere else. He is with you because that is what his name is. And that is how we, what he's named at Christmas. Mary believed this promise that God was with her. The shepherds believed that God was with her too. And God is with you too. You can know regardless of what happens this Christmas season and whatever's going on in your life that you can choose joy and celebrate that God is with you. All right, I'm gonna pray for you guys and then there's some questions. Father God, I thank you so much for this Christmas season as we kick it off. I don't know what's going on with everybody in the room, but I know I've had really great Christmas seasons and I've had really tough ones. And regardless of what this season is for somebody and the mess that they may have or the really awesome time that they're gonna have, God, you are with us and we can trust you. You can bring joy to our lives and I pray that each one in this room would find one thing to be joyful of and grateful for this Christmas season. At least it's you at the very least. They could be grateful for you because you are the greatest gift we were ever given. We love and praise you in Jesus' name, amen.